In today's brief video, I want to talk to you guys about the Marijuana Anonymous 12-step recovery coaching programs, and I want to share with you my opinions on the negatives, the positives, and then draw comparisons between 12-step recovery coaching programs and the addiction mindset recovery coaching programs that we offer here through our channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching, which is dedicated to helping people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, substances I once struggled with. If you want to learn more about our free and paid resources, be sure to check out the video description, the pinned comment, or the link on my page at the end of today's video. As a quick disclaimer, it doesn't matter how you start your recovery or sobriety journey just as long as you get there. So at the end of the day, I have nothing against or for Marijuana Anonymous, but I do understand that 12-step programs aren't for everyone, and I want to share my opinions on why they weren't exactly for me in today's video. So Marijuana Anonymous, this is right off of their website. They state, our old ideas and way of life no longer work for us. Our suffering shows us that we need to let go absolutely. I would agree with this to an extent. Our old ideas and ways of life no longer are working for us if we're at a point of weed addiction. Weed for me was once something that was fun. It was a good time recreationally. And to be honest, it helped with my sleep. It helped with anxiety. It might have even helped with the depression and the stress of school when I was smoking and work. But eventually that changed as my life circumstances changed. My relationship with weed no longer was working. And acknowledging that was a huge step in quitting. So I'm on the same page with MA as far as that goes. They say our suffering shows us that we need to let go absolutely. I disagree with this. Some people will quit smoking weed and they may go back to smoking one day and they may be okay in doing so. That is a choice that they may choose to make out of their own free will and decision. And I think there is nothing wrong with that. And that's a big difference between what we talk about as compared to Marijuana Anonymous or other 12-step programs, allowing people the room to experiment with their relationship with cannabis. Even though I have made the choice to remain completely cannabis-free for my foreseeable future. Jumping into the 12 steps, one, we admitted we were powerless over marijuana, that our lives have become unmanageable. I completely disagree with this. There's a lot of things in life that I might be powerless over, but the choice to go and choose to smoke marijuana is not something I'm powerless over. If I were sitting here in my office and had no forewarning of a tornado coming and a tornado suddenly blasted through my building as I was recording this, that is something I am powerless over. I cannot control that. I can control whether or not I text my plug. I can control whether or not I'm going to walk into the smoke shop or dispensary and buy more weed. I can control whether or not I'm going to flick that lighter to light my bowl or light my bong or light my volcano vaporizer. I am not powerless over that decision. And I think telling people they're powerless over it is a very dangerous mindset. So that's one thing I strongly disagree with. Secondly, why I disagree with this is because sobriety and recovery is about control. It's about controlling your finances, controlling your health. It's about getting control back in parts of your life that you have lost control of. And reclaiming control from addiction is a very powerful thing. So I do not, I do not like the mentality of being powerless over this. I do agree, though, as I said earlier, that it has made our lives become unmanageable. Number two and three, step two and three go hand in hand. I've come to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity goes hand in hand with step number three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. So here they're not referencing God in a Catholic sense per se. They're saying that sense of higher power. Although I think religion is great, I was just married two weeks ago in a, a church recently, right? Me and my wife decided to do that. One, religion is not for everyone, and I think 12-step programs are deterring a lot of people by taking the religious approach to things. That's the first thing that I'm going to say. And our programs at Addiction Mindset, although faith can be a part of them, they are not one of our founding principles. 
The second thing in our programs is believing that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. We believe firmly in our programs, and I believed this in my own sobriety. It was my responsibility and my free will to work on and restore my sanity. I did not believe that anyone else was going to do that for me. Because then, if I chose to go smoke, I'd say, well, it's the will of God. It is what it is. It's the greater power driving me to do this. And at the end of the day, I would rather believe that I had the free will, maybe free will given to me by God or given to me by religion, to go make that choice. I view religion as free will. From my understanding of Catholic faith, that's what I was raised in. God gave us the free will to either wake up and make good decisions or wake up and make horrible decisions. So I don't believe that I that I should just be throwing my decision making to some higher power when that is my responsibility. That is on me to take care of. Getting support through faith, getting support through a community, I'm all for that. But at the end of the day, the accountability and the responsibility is on me. So I don't necessarily believe in that only a higher power could restore me to my sanity. Step number four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. I completely agree with that. I think that's a great step. Uh, Digging deep, digging deep. Step number five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to other human beings the exact nature of our wrongs. So step number five is kind of going into truth telling. And this is something where I think I actually lack in the development of our programs. Truth telling has been proven to release dopamine. Truth telling has been proven to be a very important part of recovery for people when it comes to quitting addictions. And I think this is a great thing. Now, I think we have to be careful with it because everyone lies. And in the process of truth telling, I don't think we want to become a welcome mat of constant apologizing to people because I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing. I don't know that that is. Step number six, we entire we were entirely ready to have God remove all of these defects of character. Again, I think it's our responsibility to find ways to remove our character defects. This is I, I see this all the time in 12-step programs where people are like, it's God's will. It's on God. God will do what's right for me and what's just for me. And then they go buy a bottle of vodka. And it's like, You made that choice. You made that decision. That is on you. God is not going to remove all of the liquor from the liquor store. It is on you to not go to the liquor store. So I believe it's our job to remove and work on our own character defects through the help of God, through the help of a faith-based community. That's great if you want to go that route. But again, Step number seven is kind of the same thing, humbly asking God to remove our shortcomings. I view it as my responsibility and my accountability to work on and improve those shortcomings through the free will that God or whatever you want to refer to gave you, okay? That's how I see it. Step number eight. Made a list of all persons who we harmed and became willing to make amends with them. I think that's a good step. Again, that goes back to truth-telling, apologizing, making wrongs right. I would just caution people, don't become a doormat for other people. Because maybe some of the things that you harmed, maybe you put your foot down rightfully so. For example, maybe you burned a bridge with a business partner or a family member. But maybe burning that bridge was warranted. A lot of people in addiction tend to be there because others were taking advantage of them or causing harm to them. So we don't want to go apologizing to the wrong people. At least that's my opinion. We can become too apologetic is a viewpoint that I have when it comes to addiction recovery. Step number nine, make direct amends to, to such people who, whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Sure, I agree with that. Step number 10, continue to take personal inventory and when we're wrong, promptly admitting it. This goes back to truth telling and being accountable for ourselves and I love that step. Step number 11, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood God. Praying only for knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry that out. I agree with this. I think prayer... 
I think meditation, anything along those lines is a very powerful thing. I think it's an excellent coping mechanism. I think it's an excellent way to reduce stress, reduce anxiety, and I think it's an extra excellent way to build up faith, not only in, let's say, a religious entity, but faith in ourselves. Addiction robs us of faith in ourselves, the ability for us to achieve, the ability for us to get sober. And I think re- anything that you can do that's going to strengthen your faith in yourself, which Prayer, I believe, can strengthen faith in oneself, even if they're demonstrating faith in a God or a higher power, I think is a very, very positive thing because faith is something that addiction damages. So I'm a fan of that. Step number 12, having a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to marijuana addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So I, I agree with this, that when people are willing to listen and when people ask questions about addiction recovery, that we have the responsibility of sharing our stories. And I say that because if it wasn't for people sharing their stories, and this is really began with Alcoholics Anonymous and 12-step programs, I never would have known that there were people out there like me suffering. And this is one of the huge advantages to Marijuana Anonymous or 12-step programs. The sharing of stories, the relatability to other people. I think this is a very powerful and important thing. And I do think we have a duty to do that, to share our story with others who are willing to listen or who are asking questions. I'm not a very vocal guy about my recovery and sobriety unless I'm asked, unless I'm on here on YouTube talking about it. It's not something I talk about day to day. Um, I have many other interesting parts of my life that I would rather talk about. The last thing that I want to emphasize to you guys is the aspects of we are marijuana addicts. Hi, my name's Frank and I'm a marijuana addict. I firmly disagree with this on every level because saying I'm an addict takes away from so many other positive aspects of my life and who I am. I'm an amazing chiropractic physician. I'm an amazing husband. I'm an amazing business person, right? I'm an amazing family member to my sisters and my parents. I am so many other things. The day you quit becomes the day you are no longer an addict. You are an ex-addict the moment you decide to make that decision. So let's stop living in the past. That is one of my biggest beefs with 12-step recovery programs. I believe by stating I am an addict, I am living in the past. And our programs at Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching are very future focused. I understand working on past traumas and working on things like that, but we have to stop living in the past. And by saying I'm an addict keeps me stuck in a past life. So I firmly disagree with that. And I firmly disagree with the fact that I can't manage my own life. They say probably no human or power can relieve our addiction and that our higher power can and will if sought. I firmly disagree. I am the one who had to remove my addiction. Yes, I got the help of a community. Yes, I got the help of a therapist. Yes, you can have faith. Yes, you can have all of these things. But at the end of the day, it is us who has to take responsibility and accountability for our actions. And that is one of the most powerful aspects, in my opinion, of addiction recovery. Going through life, Viewing life as something that we have no control over, that it's in something or someone else's control, is horridly depressing. I would rather go through life seeing myself as having the free will and the ability to make decisions for myself and the ability to manage my own life. That, to me, is significantly more promising than saying, I'm an addict, I'm not capable of managing my own life, I can't relieve myself of this suffering, only a higher power can, if sought. They say, only if sought. So what, if I go get high today because I lose a family member, I get in a car accident, I lose my business, something horrific happens, what, that was the will of the world, that was the will of God? I don't buy it, I don't believe that. Now, there's some incredible advantages to AA and Marijuana Anonymous. It's free. You have 24-7 access to meetings. 
it gives you community. And I think community is one of the biggest things we can gain from 12-step recovery programs. You can get a sponsor. Again, it's free. Two, even though I disagree with their rigidity, their rigidity around rules of if you smoke once, that's a full relapse. And not only do, do I disagree with it, I think it's dangerous because that is enough to traumatize someone, that idea of starting over, right? 10 years of sobriety, someone wants to smoke once or twice and their life is completely unaffected by it. That's not a relapse. That's not anything. That's a sober person who decided they wanted to smoke weed. That's all that is. And have a good time once in a while. That's all that is. I think it's dangerous, but I do not fully disagree with it because programs have to have rules. They have to have things that keep people accountable. And the 12-step programs do that. They hold people accountable. They hold people to a high standard. And if they didn't have rules and if we didn't have accountability, you wouldn't have a program. So even though I disagree with it, I agree with it at the same time. And I actually think in some lights, it can be a positive because I do think it's important that we hold ourselves accountable, especially when we're going through addiction recovery. But 12-step programs are a very beneficial thing. They're free. They give you a sense of community. You can get sponsors, 24-7 access, and friendships are to be made. It is hard in today's world to find people who are sober. That number of people is growing ever increasingly thin, and 12-step programs are a great place to find that sense of community. With all of that being said, if you want to learn more about the Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs or the Marijuana Anonymous 12-step programs, I have put links to each of those websites and programs in the pinned comment, the video description, or the link in my page. So be sure to check that out. If you guys want to work one-on-one, we offer one-on-one coaching right here at Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching. Be sure to check out the pinned comment for more information. 